38% of men who have bought a gun have taken a training class. Take a guess the number of women who have taken a training class that have bought a gun. Honestly, I would say it's probably much higher. Take a guess. 70%? 73. 73% of women out there have <laughs> taken a course. Price is right rules. I just want to say price is right rules. <laughs>
empowered? I would say they were empowered, as a matter of fact. Yes, that's a great word. The other, the other <laughs> stat, there's a whole laundry list of these stats on the NSSF website, but the other one that blew my mind was uh, men, it's 38%, and I'm sure the internet will correct me if I'm wrong, but I just looked these up before we sat down. 38% of men who have bought a gun have taken a training class. Take a guess the number of women who have taken a training class that have bought a gun. Honestly, I would say it's probably much higher. Take a guess. 70%? 73 oh. 73% of women so out there have taken a course. Price is right rules. I just want to say price is right rules. I and what's funny is I would I would think it would be something like CCW or whatever else. It was literally like a first shots class, like a basic fundamental class. It's women who have finally been like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I want to be involved with this. I want to learn how to defend myself, but I know jack shit. Yeah. So where do I start? And we have a, show, a class here. It's an awesome shots. place to start. And I always yeah. tell people that that's just a great first stepping yeah. stone. It's like a two or three hour class. Look at a range near you. I'm sure if they're an NSSF affiliated range, which yeah. like most ranges are, they have some sort of first shots class. It may not be called first shots, but if you're a woman looking to get in the industry and you don't have anybody to help you along the way, go to your local range, ask them about your first shots class or some sort of, some sort of introductory class. But Good on the ladies for taking training. I wish I could get more dudes to go in and do more training, but you know we don't read manuals or ask for directions. You either, don't. So. That's a, I was literally about to mention that it's like one of the most defining features, and you and I talk about this all the time when we're trying to you know move furniture okay. or do basic things. That our brains are so different, and most women that I've ever spoken with, they really want to deep down get into the nitty gritty and learn about things because they want to be as safe as possible and they want to be as efficient as possible. So they do feel that empowerment and that courage and that, you know, just confirmation of, I know what I'm doing. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I'm in control of this situation. For sure. And the one thing I had noticed about First Shots especially, and it's something I spoke with Chuck, our training academy director about, was that a lot of the women who come in to do it will bring their kids to mm -hmm. also go through and do all those firearm fundamentals and learning all the do's and don'ts and all those really basic tenets. And it's just so refreshing to see people really taking charge of that and saying, not only am I learning the safety of this, I am bringing my children in to learn the safety of this too, because it's that important to me that this be a part of our house, our household and our culture as a family. Oh, 100%. It's wonderful. I couldn't agree more. There's no excuse for not getting proper you know, handling of firearms, safe storage of firearms, and any basic class it's so goes available. over all that stuff. It's so available. Yeah. I mean, you can't swing a dead cat in the Midwest while hitting a range that <laughs> teaches some sort of class like that. There, a lot of times there's free seminars. A lot of times there's really low-cost seminars. Yeah. A lot of times, like for us, when you're bringing in a kid into our classes that's just sitting there with mom and dad or mom or whatever learning, we don't charge for that. Unless they're actively going through and participating in the class. If, otherwise, if they're just in there doing, they're going to the the safe stores, the security, whatever else, the safe handling and whatever else, we don't charge for that. That's part of that's part of being a two A ambassador in the community. So. Well, the problem is if you completely ignore that and you know you learn to use your firearm and your husband does, but you keep your children completely removed from that, it's going to be that kind of taboo thing where kids are like, "Ooh, I'm not supposed to touch this. Mom and Dad don't want me to touch yeah. it." And it's you want to avoid that so much, and uh -huh. if you teach them how dangerous that can be and how you have to be very, very disciplined and know what's happening before you should even look at it or touch it it's just really important and it's just so nice to see them bringing their kids to learn all that with them yep 100 percent. so along that vein of women getting involved more in the shooting sports and it, it it is an intimidating environment because it is still a male dominated environment although sure. there are plenty of phenomenal female shooters out there so many smack asses oh yeah there are communities out there for women specific organizations. So we host one here, but you want to touch on that a little bit about some of the female led, female run, female only organizations that exist out there that any reputable range will have some sort of literature on or be able to provide you point in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you said, there's so many different ones and some ranges have their own. So ours, we're the home range for a chapter of a girl and a gun. Mm -hmm. And those women are just absolutely amazing. They're super supportive. And they literally, I mean, their knowledge base goes from knows nothing at all and is just trying to dip their yeah, like BQHO in before. here all the way up to range certified safety officers in their own right, like everything else. So it's just really a wonderful community to get together and be supportive. And there's no judgment. There's no hassle. It's very much, hey, we will come to where you are. What step you're on, we will come to you and help you get to the step you want to be on. And yeah. there are so many other wonderful ones. You know, go to your local range. Ask them about it. Say, hey, what women's program do you have here? 
or do you know of one nearby? I mean, girl and a gun is so nationwide. The women in the shooting sports is the largest growing demographic, and anybody who's a business owner in this industry knows that, and they're tracking on that. So most businesses and ranges are doing everything they can to cater to the largest growing demographic. It happens in every industry. It doesn't matter if it's... If it's a bowling alley, <laughs> it's a restaurant, it doesn't matter. They're catering to their keen and the largest growing demo in, in the shooting sports is definitely females. Yeah, so we are. It's us. We are the largest yeah. growing demo, you know? So most ranges out there, especially reputable ranges, they're in SSF range, they will have some sort of female program available. I guarantee it. Within within 30, 40 miles of where you're at. Unless you're in some remote ass part of like South Dakota or something, but I mean, yeah, I mean, then well, you might have to go to like someone's basement to do it. <laughs> where we're at, there's like four within I don't know twenty miles of yeah. different organizations. There's a girl and a gun. There's a well armed woman. Well-armed woman, yeah. There's uh, I can't ever think of the one that's purple, but there's another one that's not as popular. But the two giants are a girl and a gun and well armed. And well armed woman, yeah, they're both huge, and they're both just girl medical. with a gun. Girl with the gun, yeah, that's, that's a different one. one, yeah. And it's great. They all have their own, you know, ways of doing things, you know, shooting journals and different things like that. They've got, like, seminars and summits and all kinds of stuff. Or you can just stay at your home range and learn with the rest of them and yeah. have a good time while you're doing it, too. All right. So we're a lady. Well, it's 2024. I mean, who knows what I'm I'm a lady. Today. But you're a lady. You've crossed that threshold into, okay, I definitely want to get involved. There's organizations out there. There's ranges near me that can help out. All right, I've got a. I've purchased, made my first purchase, and that's that could be a video in and of itself. Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. Let's look at skills to develop and what what throughout what you've done since you started getting more into shooting handguns, which is the primary way to defend yourself with concealed carry. What ways have you seen that your skills elevate? based on where they were before and what we do here, what other people can do at their local ranges, at home, whatever it may be. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do, whether you take classes or not or join leagues or anything. The thing that's honestly helped me the most with handgun manipulation are our leagues. I'm not even going to lie. I know I'm way slower than a lot of people. I get that. Slow is smooth. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I have gotten considerably faster. I mean, my times now, as opposed to two years ago when I started doing leagues, are half or less most times my accuracy is much better than it used to be and just the overall manipulation of everything is so much smoother i am so much more confident with the actual handling of it whether it's reloads or you know if i have some kind of an issue like a hang up of some kind of stovepipe or whatever it's like just malfunction yeah just basic malfunctions i'm getting so much faster at clearing those and moving on as well as basic manipulation and you know just muzzle awareness all the really important things Especially if, heaven forbid, I were to have to use that in our home to protect, mm. you know, me or the kids or whatever else, or you if you're sleeping. But, <laughs> yeah, right, you don't sleep. But, um, yeah, the leaks have honestly helped me the most, but I've also taken a bunch of our classes, like the Red Dot class and stuff like that, that have really helped the little building blocks to really kind of make me a better shooter as a whole, so I, to speak. I couldn't agree more, and I'm glad you said it because, you know, we're talking – well, hopefully to a larger female demographic here. Boys, if you see this, send it to your spouse, send it to your girlfriend, send it to your mom, send it to your grandma. I don't care. This is great information for females in the shooting sports, especially if they're a little leery about it. Um, but the the leagues is one of those things where I think a lot of people get held up on the competition aspect of it. They li- they look at it and like, well, I can't compete with that. You know, we joined a bowling league. Yeah, <laughs> we're not great. Look, look, we're in peace. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. We had guys in the league bowling three hundreds, two nineties, and up, and it was like we were bowling like one fifty. I'm over here making turkey noises and, <laughs> and just having a good time. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, a lot of people get held up and hung up on the the whole competition. Yeah. Holy shit! It, it works you through fundamentals. It works you through transitioning from multiple targets. It walks you through trigger press, all of the basic fundamentals of operating the gun, and. You as slow as smooth, smooth as fast. We have seventy plus year old men and women who compete in our leagues. Oh yeah, and they're better shooters today than they were at the beginning of the league, and so on. So, ladies out there, don't be afraid to get involved in a league at your local range, outdoor, indoor, whatever else. It's a community. Mm-hmm. I think you've seen this before. I mean, hell, you literally just got done shooting with one of our regulars that comes yeah. in because you guys have fun. It's there's a lot of camaraderie to build. You're also building skills, which are very, very important. Well, one thing I will add, and this is for for all the ladies out there with husbands or significant others that they shoot with, we don't like to listen to you guys. 
I'm going to use the royal we here because it's most of the women I've ever talked to say the same thing. And most of the husbands do too. I've taught, just, I've taught something. hundreds of people how to shoot, if not thousands of people how to shoot, but I cannot teach my wife listen, or my mother. Listen, 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 listen. There's something in our, in our lady lizard brain back here that's like, nope, nope, nope. That just can't, not, does not compute, doesn't. But so one thing I really enjoy shooting because I cannot compete if I were to compete with you and some of these other guys, I'm nowhere near as fast, nowhere near like, and that's fine. Cause I'm also not shooting the same things you guys are. We also have been doing it. And you guys have been doing it so much longer. And I'm not former military or former law enforcement or anything like that. I'm just like off the streets. You know what I mean? And <laughs> you're a trash panda. <laughs> I'm a trash panda. That's fine. I, I accept what I am. I'm just going to clip that. I'm off the streets. You're a trash panda. Trash panda. <laughs> but I'm an adorable trash panda. But you know, one of the other employees that I shoot with regularly, him and I love shooting with each other because we're both pretty. He's better than I am for sure. He's a lot faster than I am, but we're both pretty evenly matched, much more evenly so than you guys. So shooting with him or like some of our other regulars, it's way more comfortable for me because that's more my level. We're not competing, but then they will honestly, they'll say, oh my gosh, the way you did that was really awesome. You should try that again next time and try this. And it's, I am much more receptive to hearing it from other people than I am from you and I love you, but it's just a fact. And so it really helps me become a better shooter too. And it, it is fun. It is like a bowling league. I would have it on record that she says she actually loves me. So, all right. I'm not gonna beat you on camera. Let's, Sorry, Jesus. let's <laughs> move on to safety and education. Obviously we touched on safety a little bit with getting into some of those first shots class and some of those never touched a gun before, breaking, breaking the glass ceiling, getting into firearms ownership in that journey. But yeah. education, you started from scratch you yeah. started from you know hunter's education hunting with your stepdad in the hills of pennsylvania when you were young and then you didn't really do anything with that from like 12 13 years old until we got married for about, no, a, about, got a together, decade, but, about a decade about a decade it was legitimately a solid decade yeah so we've already established that women when they purchase a firearm they like to take classes so yeah Touch a little bit on the importance of education and some of the classes that you've taken that you found really beneficial that might be a little more specific. And again, a lot of ranges have hyper-tailored, hyper-specific classes to different disciplines. So for me, I typically shoot with irons. I have shot with, you know, with red dots before. Um, on rifles, obviously, I shoot with, you know, something on the rifles. But with a handgun, that's a completely different discipline. And I never realized how different it was until I looked through a few red dots and my, oh, this one's pretty and slapped it on there and I, I shot like shit. It was terrible, horrible, so bad. And I was like, oh, well, this is why we have a pistol red dot class right here. Just come on down and see what's going on. And just the basic fundamentals of that. And that's something that you can practice at home too. Once you learn that, you can, there are so many dry fire exercises that you can do at home that just seriously, I mean, having a little bit of tape and an empty wall and nothing but time on your hands, you can do so many exercises at home to help hone those skills once you learn how. And you know something as simple as that, or like you said, just even basic firearm fundamental classes with basic manipulation, so many people, women especially, their grip is just terrible. And they don't know it's terrible because they're like, oh, well, this worked for me so far. It's like, great, how does your grouping look? Are you actually hitting that guy that's running at you, you know, more than once or twice? Little, there's just such little changes that taking even the most basic pistol or basic, you know, pistol carbine, because I love, I love my scorpion, you know, all these basic classes you can take. And once you start building those building blocks, you can do more advanced classes, but even like a personal protection inside the home kind of class, really learning what to do. Cause that's, you know, heaven forbid, if you have to use it, that's probably the kind of situation you're going to have to use it in is within your home, in the dark, working with lights, working with red dots, working with night sights, things that, you know, you don't think about, like as you're carrying during the day, you're like, oh, if a guy came at me, I can see him bright and clear. Okay, what if it's nighttime and it's three in the morning and he's breaking into your house and I don't have a light on my gun or whatever the case may be. At our house, you just reach over and grab mine. But... No, exactly. But, you know, those are all little things that are super important that a lot of people don't think about right away, especially if they're just getting into it. And I would have never thought about that had I not worked here and like really gotten to know, you know, where I started when I first started working here a few years ago with you guys to where I'm in, where I am now is just like so far different in a positive way. And it has really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I would have never thought about. And I take a lot of joy in talking to women who come in here or call in that also have no idea where to start. And it makes them feel more comfortable too, that I'm like, hey, this works for me. 
you know, this, if you don't know where to start, why don't you try starting here or try starting this, you know, I carry 43X, you carry 43X. There's a bunch of people in this building that do. That's not what we all carry, but. I'd go back and forth between 43X and my X macro, but. Sure, but it's, you know, it all depends on your hand sizes, what you're comfortable with. It might, it depends on what I'm wearing, to be honest. <laughs> If I'm where if it's summertime, I carry the 43 X because it's smaller. Because it's my, smaller, yeah. My macro has it's a bigger gun. It has an optic and a light on it. But the thing, the thing I honestly hear a lot from women, especially, is they'll go in somewhere and someone will be like, "Oh, you know, that gun's terrible," or "Oh, you know, you can't shoot that," or "You can't shoot this." You need to start with this. You have to start with this. And it's Real like, quick. why are you going to sell my grandma a Desert Eagle yeah. when she doesn't need a Desert Eagle? You know what I mean? So speaking of the Desert Eagle. A lot of ladies out there might be a little intimidated by the recoil of a firearm. Sure. If anybody has ever gone to BuckeyeShootingCenter.com and watched the little header reel, you'll see these Skeletor tiny hands come up and shoot a Desert Eagle and a 500. And the 500, Magnum. yeah. One-handed. I mean, the 50 cows that are out there, they're, they're so heavy, they don't have a ton of recoil. I mean, yeah. it's not that bad. So recoil and recoil management, recoil impulse is one of those things that I think throws a lot of women off especially because it's it's loud and it's it's a powerful cartridge but it's not that bad i mean the best best way to do it is to sit down with an instructor sit down if especially if it's your first time and just get some trigger time we, you can walk up start with a 22 and move up from there if you've ever shot a bb gun it's like shooting a 22 maybe try to do a little more recoil yeah hardly though not really yeah well some nerd in their basement is <laughs> going to be like oh actually oh uh, mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, well, the yeah. 22 has more recoil by 33%, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Yeah, screw you. So, to wrap up, before we get to finishing this thing, do you have any advice for ladies that are out there that are looking to break that glass ceiling and get into the shooting sports and get into defensive carry and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are a lot of things to think about. I think the first step is thinking about finding somewhere close to you where you will be able to go and actually practice and spend time there. And it's very important that you're comfortable there. You know, you might have a range that's five miles from your house and you you walk in there and you just feel really terrible and you don't want to be there and you don't like the people there. Don't go there. Go somewhere else. There's going to be another place you can go to. Use your online resources. Find your local women's chapter of a girl and a gun, well-armed woman, whatever. Go and introduce yourself. There's no expectation. You don't have to sign up and pay a fee or anything like that, go and see and just see if you even like that environment and see if it's something conducive to you learning. I can't speak to all the Girl and a Gun chapters that are out there, but I know that the one that we host here and Sam and Mindy before her, awesome. uh, they're, they're so awesome. amazing women that they they literally are the salt of the earth. They're great women that help out and especially with newcomers, newbies, whatever you would call them, getting into the shooting sports. So we love them. We can't appreciate what they do for the community enough. Absolutely. Uh, but you know, check out some of those women-led organizations. They're phenomenal, and they have hellacious infrastructure over top of them, too, which is great. They're just such a great place to start because literally you can go from nothing, yep. just nothing. Yep. It's wonderful. Absolutely. But, so, yeah. all right, do you have any last words for the ladies that are out there? Don't be afraid of a full-size gun, please. You're not restricted to carry size guns. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to tell people. You know, it doesn't have to be, sm- it's smaller is not necessarily always better, especially for depending how you're going to carry. Because that's a whole other, hey, you know, that's a whole other question is, you know, are you going to carry on yourself? Are you going to carry in a purse? How are you comfortable? Yeah, that's, it's a whole other discussion. I'm hoping to so, have you on for a couple more videos. One of the things I'm oh. talking about is ladies and how they carry and stuff like that. Because you are definitely thick with three C's. So yes. you, you can carry it a bunch of different places. That And large skeletal hands. <laughs> ridiculous but Dang. i just you know just get out there and have fun learn stuff be safe learn stuff and have fun because the more relaxed you are you know the easier things will come to you and the more comfortable you will be so just just Absolutely. get to it you know there's so many different things you can do 100 percent. well boys and girls we thank you for taking the time to listen to us ramble normally i would refer to us as dumbasses but i'm not going to do that and <laughs> you know why Aww. so <laughs> Don't forget, if you want to support us and support the channel, uh, subscribe, comment, and like this video. It helps. This video is more informational for the ladies in your life. Um, guys, you also need to get in the range and practice and train, too. I promise you. We all do. It's it's a perishable skill. So get in the range and stuff like that. But please, take, this, take the time. Send this to a loved one. Send this to a lady in your life. 
especially somebody that is potentially thinking about getting into defending themselves. That's what this is for. That's the whole purpose behind what we're trying to do here. So um, don't forget, though, we get to 2,500 subs. Somebody's taking whole 500 rounds of Winchester 9mm brass case. Oh, my yeah. Yeah, which is pretty much gold soon. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, without anything else, that's Shannon, my lovely wife, and our HR membership coordinator, event coordinator, and lady liaison, if you will. Lady liaison. Would you mind if ladies had any questions that they come and ask for you by name? No, absolutely. Please feel free. I love answering questions. I love talking to people. I'm a talker. So, you yeah. know, the more I can get more ladies shooting, the That's better. This video is longer than the other one. <laughs> Listen. But, ladies, if you're this. in Central Ohio and you want to have a, a friendly face and somebody who can talk to you that's been through cradle to grave throughout this whole thing, come in and talk to Shannon. She is a phenomenal resource that we have. We're very fortunate to have her. I'm not just saying that because I have to sleep next to her. She is very, very kind and will help you along your journey, especially if you're taking your first steps. But we take thank you for taking the time to listen to us, and we'll see you next week.